Okay, it's day 137, and this is Ronald Burgess here. These three photos, the three thumbnails I did on my last three episodes yesterday, and he is shares a last name, of course, with our famous Cameron Ross Burgess. Now, I just want to say that a secure channel of communication has been opened in the past, in 1979, and there's some methodology being used by the CIA in order to enable this kind of communication, right? Here's the big new Brzezinski saying we're opening up weapons for drugs, weapons for drugs, weapons for drugs. There, there must be some communication form. So we're moving toward establishing where that is. I say it's Navy. I say it's Navy executive officers, the same chain of information and cryptology that you would use uh, for nuclear submarines. It's the most secure communication. And most of the time, the executive officer on a boat, if you remember, Denzel Washington isn't doing anything, just sitting around. He's not commanding the boat. He's only there for one reason, for the nuclear launch or not, if you remember the movie Crimson Tide. Okay, so let's just, for background, here's Burgess, and he went to Auburn, as, as did Cameron, the guy who got shot by the White House. First thing is, everybody has to believe that Mr. Burgess actually is not retired and actually works for Donald Trump and runs the uh, cyber uh, for Donald Trump. And here you can... Read this article by The Intercept, where basically he's a very quiet hero. He's listed as a quiet hero in Congress. Um, uh, Saxby Chandless uh, talks about him and so forth. So, and he was the ex-director of the DIA, like Michael Flynn. Okay? There's a couple of other articles for the non-believers uh, that Burgess, it's just, he's not very well known and people haven't seen his face much. The next piece is really... Auburn University and them being a cyber center of excellence for NSA. And so that's the second thing I wanted to establish here is how um, Auburn has made cyber a very important part of their curriculum. And so this could be where Malcolm Burgess, uh, excuse me, Cameron Burgess, Cameron Ross Burgess could have studied this. Now they, people are saying he studied psychology now, but still no, no pictures from graduation, no pictures in his hometown, nothing. Um, but just so everyone knows, cyber is a big deal at Auburn, and Burgess went to, not only went to Auburn, but he's also on the INSA advisory board. And INSA is an organization here based in Arlington, Virginia, where you bring in all these people from the Centers of Excellence, and they really talk about recruiting. You know, that's the key is, you know, just like you have an ROTC for People that are going to drive ships around the world, you have to have the same thing for the intelligence services. And that's what Burgess is mainly involved in. So him bringing folks to Washington, D.C. Uh, for, um, for this INSA would not be unusual. And then you could also see Auburn has a, a deal here with Oak Ridge National Laboratories as well. So Auburn, like Miami University, my alma mater, has an extensive naval ROTC. Now, I was... I, my roommate was Navy ROTC at Miami, so we talked every day about this for four years. And also, uh, we worked out with in the same place that the Navy ROTC would do their marching and so forth. So I just had a lot of contact with Navy ROTC for some reason. Uh, and so here's a little bit about Auburn's program. I'll just play a little bit here, and then I'll introduce you to the most famous graduate. So here's Auburn's most famous graduate, as far as the Navy goes anyways, the head of the NSA, the director of the NSA. Uh, now we're refilling this position, but uh, he was best known for all the unmaskings that occurred, especially Mike Flynn, who had the job after Mr. Burgess. Here's Mike Flynn talking about, excuse me, here's Admiral Rogers talking about recruiting. Cyber threats take more than technology. It takes talented, motivated people. We are investing more than ever in the recruitment and retention of a skilled workforce that is knowledgeable, passionate, and dedicated to protecting the nation 
for the safety of our citizens and of our friends and allies around the world. Admiral Mike Rogers, Director of the National Security Administration, Commander of the U.S. Cyber Command, Chief of the Central Security Service, and Auburn graduate. I was from Chicago. Born and raised in the city, lived up in, you know, up in the north in a major metropolitan area my entire life. Um, quite frankly, the journey that brought me here, this is not where I thought I would wind up as an undergraduate. I was, I had always wanted to be a naval officer, literally since I was 10 or 11. The, the dream for me always was to go in the Navy and drive ships and to do it as an officer. And to do that, you had to get a commission. And to get a commission, you had to get a degree. I thought first I'd go to the Naval Academy. That was had always been my first choice, except my grades were not very good. And I failed spectacularly in trying to get into the, the Naval Academy. Then I thought I'd try to get an ROTC scholarship. I failed miserably in trying to get a ROTC scholarship. I come from a very working class family. Neither of my parents ever went to college. My father started working at the local one of the at a local AMP in Chicago. He was born and raised in the city of Chicago, and he started working as a stock boy. And after 27 years, ultimately retired as a corporate vice president for labor relations for AMP. So he always taught me about life was about hard work. You're willing to work hard, you can do anything. I came down here my the summer of my junior year to take a look at Auburn. Had, again, I'm not from the South. I'm not from the state. Had never been here. Didn't know anything about it and met an amazing man, a guy named Bob Strong, who was the head of high school and junior college relations. I'm an average student. I couldn't get in the Naval Academy. I couldn't get a scholarship. I'm not something that a university would be fighting to get. I'm a dime a dozen individual. But in my discussions with Bob Strong, he starts talking to me about Auburn as a place. Auburn not just as a degree, but what the Auburn family is. And then he turns to my parents, and I will never forget this. He says, I know Mike would be a long way from home, and I know you're not from around here, and you don't know much about this area. I would be glad for Mike to come down a little bit early if he wanted to acclimatize himself and get used to the campus, and he could stay at my house. And I'm thinking to myself, I am a total stranger. My grades are not very good. I, I failed everywhere else I tried to get in. And yet this individual, all that mattered to him was I was an individual who was interested in Auburn. So Admiral Rogers here reminds me of a lot of my upbringing. Neither of my parents uh, had degrees, and all of the kids went on to get them. So we were uh, from the Chicago area, about 120 miles away. And this is the decision every kid in that position has to make, is this commitment to the country, doing the right thing, or being a victim of the circumstances that you're put in. It reminds me of Braverman so much, and maybe Seth Rich is in this category. And we all know the McDuffs. The McDuffs never had a question. They just answered the call. Uh, even in the most, uh, when they're completely surrounded by people, and he probably knew he was going to die right from the day he told John F. Kennedy he would take that position to break the CIA into a thousand pieces. But other folks, you know, they have a little bit more difficulty, I think. And Admiral Rogers was one of those folks who was trying to had this conflict between this loyalty to Auburn and the loyalty to the Navy and the loyalty to this inside group that recruited him and the loyalty to country. And he ended up making the right decision. And I'm just positing the theory that he could have had people coming to the White House, bringing him proof, bringing him proof to the Department of Justice, bringing him proof to the uh, different folks that were investigating this unmasking situation. I'll just finish off by saying that Cameron Ross or Jess, I believe, was one of those students. I don't know if it's the son of General Burgess or if it was one of those scholars, INSA scholars coming to Washington, but I do believe we have had several INSA scholars come to Washington carrying hard drives or carrying thumb drives for proof, either for DOJ or for other internal investigations at DIA, or other uh, in, uh, investigative bodies that I don't know anything about, tasks for, task forces and so forth. But having said that, I'll lastly introduce everyone to U.S. Cyber Command. Uh, this is what Mike Rogers was the head of. The Navy piece of this is the 10th Fleet. He actually created the 10th Fleet out of thin air. There's no ships in the 10th Fleet. 
the 10th fleet is Mercedes-Benz and, and BMWs in the parking lot at Fort Meade. Um, but the guy who runs the 10th fleet, the first guy was named McCullough. I don't think it's any relation to Charles McCullough of uh, Hillary server fame, now that Hillary's in the news again for having two breaches that were not reported. So the Charles McCullough story is getting out, um, and that is going to be in the DOJ report. But Mr. McCullough seems to think that the key to his business is the NIOCs, which is the Naval Intelligence Operations Centers. And I'm just going to say that the parts of the Naval Intelligence Operations Centers that I believe are compromised are the one in Norfolk and the one in San Diego. Norfolk covering, I believe, the CENTCOM area and, and, and Europe and San Diego covering PACCOM. 